I am nice. Yes, I am. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here I am finally at last coming at you with another Now and Then video. Yes, Now and Then is my regularly irregular feature in which I talk about two albums by the same artist, their newest release as well as one from their back catalog. The subject of today's Now and Then is young American singer-songwriter Sammy Brew, and for now we'll be talking about Crash Test Kid, his sophomore album. Now, I first found out about Sammy Brew by happening upon his debut CD, I Am Nice, in the budget section of a record store up in Portland a couple of years ago. Now, I got a bit of a Brett Denon vibe from the cover image, which I'll show you in a few minutes here. Uh, so, especially for the ridiculously low price tag, I think it was $1.99, I decided to take a chance on him. And it turns out my instinct was right. Uh, one of the more direct contemporary comparisons would be to Brett Denon, uh, although there is also a healthy dose of Bob Dylan in Sammy's song writing sensibility and musical style. That might sound like a lofty comparison or a cliché comparison. I mean, who doesn't get compared to Bob Dylan these days? And I'm not saying that his he's got the poetic profundity and depth of Dylan. I mean, who does? Especially at uh, the young age of a person like Sammy. Uh, but it's more the basic sound and approach that indirectly hints at Dylan. Now, like several artists in recent years, I heard his debut album, and although it didn't blow me away, I liked it enough that I paid attention when I saw his follow-up album coming down the pike. I checked out the singles, and I decided to pick up the album, and I was very, very glad that I did. Now, the first track on here, Gravity, has a what I kind of like to call a seize-the-moment kind of spirit in the lyrics. It's about not letting the world hold you down to what it expects or presumes you to be. So it's a very nice message in that song. And the song Die Before You Live, which is track two, has a title that's somewhat self-explanatory in that you have to let who you used to be die before who you'll become can be allowed to live. So that's another song with a fantastic message in the lyrics. And the very next track on here, track three, Teenage Mayhem, is a rocking anthem uh, with very timely lyrics, especially given the activist spirit of the young generation right now. We've been hushed, but now we get to talk. We got hidden hopes and we got dangerous thoughts. So yes, very, very timely, uh, meaningful lyrics right now. Uh, but sonically, it very much reminds me of when Bob Dylan first went electric, uh, specifically in the song Maggie's Farm. It just has that kind of a sound to it, that rough, semi-bluesy, but still upbeat kind of sound. It's just a great, great track. And uh, True Believer is a beautiful ballad. It's about uh, allowing social media's opinions to affect a person's own self-image. That's just a great, an, another timely track, for especially for uh, uh, late teenagers and uh, early 20-somethings. So yeah, a great, great song on here. Uh, the song Pendulum Thieves, that's one of the best titles of any song on this album, is one of my favorite tracks. It's an uplifting, mid-tempo, full-band electric track about wanting to stop time. The very, very, very simple concept on here, but yes, yeah, kind of has a meaning, you know. Now, the title track is uh, pretty much the centerpiece of the album. It's probably the best song on the album, in my opinion. It's a ballad about, at least what I get out of the lyrics, is the older generations underestimating the emotional impact that their bluntness or dismissiveness can have on the youth. Uh, and it uses the metaphor of crash test dummies, taking all of their bumps and bruises uh, perhaps more than they're designed to take your broken grin as they strap you in to do it all again because you're the crash test kid and the crash test kid still wants to live. So that's that's got some real punch to the lyrics, honestly. It's just, it's just a fantastic song. And uh, kind of in the same vein, we have a song on side B called Skate Park Doomsday Blues. It's a slow, melancholy song about kids at a skate park trying to ignore their life problems or their family issues with the bruises, cuts, and scabs from falls becoming metaphors for emotional and psychological wounds. And then we have the song uh, What You Give, which also has a kind of a blues sound to it, but a bit more upbeat. It reminds me of early Rolling Stones, maybe, or perhaps a poppier version of The Doors. And then we have Fishfoot, which is has a bit of an 80s post-punk new wave sound to it, with its echoing guitars and fast-paced, half-yelled lyrics. So yeah, just a, a little bit of punk on this album to kind of shake things up. It's a, a, one of the more uh, unusual songs on this album. So, And then the album closer, Paint It Blue, is another delicate ballad in which the protagonist is a painter, but still an artist, just like a musician is, uh, who wants to tell the object of his affection how he feels about her, but is afraid to. So it's, I mean, it's like 
who amongst us can't relate to that problem at some point in our lives. So yeah, as you can see, Sammy Brew just writes with wisdom beyond his years on this album. It's just an absolutely fantastic. It is criminal that this album has just not gotten hard, it's gotten hardly any attention. I don't know of any other uh, YouTube uh, channel that's uh, reviewed this album, honestly. But uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic. One of my favorite albums of the year so far, and was one of my most anticipated of the year uh, ever since I really started to enjoy uh, his first album. But yeah, this one just kind of blew me away with uh, how many steps up. Uh, he, he upped his game between his first album and this one. So yeah, fantastic album. It's probably going to be in my top five for the year. But that was now, and this is then. I Am Nice, Sammy Brew's debut album from 2017. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I ended up enjoying Crash Test Kid so much that uh, it helped me gain a new appreciation for this album uh, when I came back to it, and so much so that I decided to give Sammy his due and buy it at full price on vinyl, as you can see here, uh, since I knew I'd appreciate it so much more than the bargain price CD of it. And uh, yeah, this album has a bit more of an emphasis on acoustic instrumentation and uh, generally more mid-tempo or uh, softer songs and ballads as opposed to the Crash Test Kids more energetic and rockish feel. So yeah, uh, each of the albums gives a bit of a, a different dimension to Sammy as an artist. Uh, but one noteworthy thing is this album's use of a variety of organs, at least four that I could count in the, uh, the, the liner notes. The more popular Hammond B3 and Wurlitzer organs, but also a pump organ as well as a Farfisa, which I hadn't heard of until I saw its name in the liner notes here. Now, most of the songs on this album are about love in its various stages, uh, so, you know, a more basic material, not as many insightful observations on life and growing up as on his sophomore album, but you kind of can't fault Sammy for that. You know, he, he's got to start somewhere, I guess you'd say, so, you know, probably better, in fact, to start with the more basic material. Uh, but still, this is a batch of very, very well-written songs. Uh, the opening track, I Know, really stands out because it has one of the most beautiful acoustic guitar hooks of any song that I've heard in recent memory, flat out. Uh, this, this early hint of his instrumental talents is a great way to start the album, and a great way to start his first album. Uh, the song I Never Said has an instrumental lushness to it that brings to mind classic Roy Orbison, or at least that's the vibe that I get from it. Uh, the song Jealous has a very much of a throwback country sound to it, a country arrangement. Maybe something that Hank Snow or Hank Williams might have done. Uh, you know, probably very basic names to pull out of my head, but uh, you get the idea. Just very, very retro throwback country. Very nice, uh, easy on the ears. Uh, the song Covered in Blood, by contrast, has an almost punk sound to it. Uh, perhaps uh, pretty fitting considering its title. So yeah, just a lot of varying, varying sounds on this album. Uh, the track I'm Not Your Man has uh, kind of a shuffling sort of an arrangement uh, that again evokes hints of Bob Dylan. Uh, its lyrics evolve from the point of view of a supportive friend at the beginning, showing regret at not being more than that, until at the end he's asking to be your man. A very good, uh, very interesting song uh, there, lyrically. And then the, th the song I Don't Want You To Leave is a somewhat distinctive track because it's a slow ballad for the most part, but it's broken up in the middle with a more up-tempo interlude. And then the song Lay Me Down, which is probably my favorite track on the album, uh, mostly because it's one of the few full band songs. It kind of reminds me of classic Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, just this is the sound of it. It's just great. And uh, the lyrics, uh, from what I get from the lyrics anyway, are the protagonist's confession of his failure as a lover and companion. So yeah, that's, that, that's one of the real standouts on this album. And then Control Freak is another track, kind of like What You Give off of Crash Test Kid, that gives me a classic rock vibe, kind of like Jefferson Airplane. And perhaps, I mean, this is just a guess, perhaps it has something to do with the Farfisa. And I'm not sure because the liner notes for Crash Test Kid actually don't give a track-by-track -track, uh, breakdown of instrumental credits. Um, but the song is about the protagonist wanting to be in control and losing his temper when he's not, So, which is kind of a... A paradox? Is that what it is? Or uh, ironic? It's, I guess it's ironic. And then we have the closing track, Salty Times, which has a slow, bluesy feel to it, and somewhat cryptic lyrics to me. I could smell trouble from a mile away, and it wasn't stopping anytime soon. I was born into a river of filth, but I swear, Lord, I had no clue. But it has a great guitar trill at the end of each chorus, so with the guitar hook on track one, it makes for kind of a fitting bookend that way of, of uh, you know, Sammy's guitar talents. So yeah, this, this just, you know, from literally from front to back, this album is just fantastic. I can't recommend this album. I can't recommend either of these albums uh, enough. They're just, they're just both fantastic. And Sammy Brew, in my opinion, 
he's an artist that hasn't gotten nearly enough attention and uh, should be getting a lot more. Uh, he deserves your attention, honestly. But uh, which album do I like more? It's a pretty tough call, but uh, I would probably have to give a very slight advantage to Crash Test Kid, just because of uh, the deeper lyrics, for one thing, and also the, the slightly more varied uh, sounds between the songs, just more, more of a, a varying palette of sounds throughout the album. So, But again, neither one of these albums is uh, deserves to be missed. you, you got to check them out. But anyway, for now, that'll do it for Sammy Brew Now and Then. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.